So, we've got ourselves a new season of One Punch Man. He has returned after what? Two years, I think it's been, since uh, his debut. Um, yeah, so I'm hot off the heels of watching the first episode of season two. Technically second, if you want to count, episode zero, which is really just a recap of what happened in season one. Oh, by the way, guys, it, it's, it's Brandon. Yeah, it's one, one of them. The other one will join eventually. Uh, he is currently in recovery mode after a lovely little surgery he had. Anyway, until maybe episode five or six, you're dealing with me. Yeah, I know. Calm down. Calm down. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. All right. We good? We good? Cool. Awesome. All right. Anyway, so I'm going to be honest. There's been a lot of, like, worry about season two and the studio change and everything. And while this episode is not the best one to really analyze those changes since the action's very minimal in this episode. It's going to be hard to really compare it at this point. Um, I have read the manga to a certain degree. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly where I cut off. It's probably about where the big bad really gets introduced in this season, which he's not here um, as of yet. This episode mainly focused on us learning about King, uh, the rank 7 uh, S-rank hero. Um, and he, he's literally the entire time been taking the credit for Saitama's kills by accident. And how he is, in fact, just an utter coward and an otaku nerd. I feel like there was a bit more that was in the manga that was kind of skipped over here. Like, the version I watched didn't even mention the fact that the king engine quote-unquote is just the fact that his heart is beating so loudly and so rapidly it sounds like an engine which is a freaking hilarious joke in and of itself <laughs> like that's that is the best right just i am so afraid that my goddamn heart is beating so loudly it's a fucking engine it sounds like an engine like i love it, it it's great it's a hilarious joke and i'm very disappointed that it didn't make it in now granted maybe one i watched isn't exactly the one that would have that or maybe there were some subtitle issues i'm not sure but yeah we basically you can sum up the entire chapter chapter yeah pff, episode you can sum up the entire episode in the fact that a king is a coward b saitama finds out about it and liz literally just jumped into his room to question why he ran away from a fight which genos then took over and then his department apparently gets attacked by a bird. If he's got a superpower, it's just to attract, like, danger to himself. Like, his his superpower is just bad luck, like, in all reality. Like, and if that is, in fact, the actual case, that his power is just straight up bad luck, it's so bad that it's put him in a position where it makes everything worse for him. I also know, and I think it was kind of left out here, that the reason Saitama goes after King to begin with is because he feels like King might be able to, you know, identify more with him, right? He might be able to understand Saitama's position because according to all the rumors and legends that surround King, he's the world's strongest man, and here he is walking away from a fight, you know? And when Saitama shows up and eventually asks him, it's more out of the consideration of like, well, how do you deal with it? What? Is this the answer that I should be seeking too? He, he's looking for what to do with all this power he has and the lack of challenge he's presented. And unfortunately for him, King is just a poser. Like, like it or not, he's in a shit position himself. And, like, I know as the season goes on, we'll get more King, like, side stuff. And it's gonna get real interesting with him just because of the fact that this side stuff is gonna be there and he's just, you know... Technically an outlet, I guess, for Saitama's boredom. Like, having a friend like King around will just give him that chance to blow off steam when he doesn't have to deal with Genos. And even, I guess, when he does have to deal with Genos. But, yeah, that, that literally sums up everything in this episode. It's, it's very short, and there's not much to be said about it. There's not much action. You can't really compare it to anything. It's, you know, 
I'm holding out hope that the uh, the animation itself will be better when we get like real action scenes, whereas this was just kind of like bits and pieces of Genos's fight with that uh, G4 uh, robot. So maybe we'll get to see more. We'll see. Um, get to. I should see more. Hopefully they don't like start cutting it because of animation budgets and shit and not being able to direct it correctly. We'll see. Um, I'm very interested though in the next episode because. Oh boy, that tease at the end with uh, with Speed of Sound, Sonic, and Fubuki. Oh boy. I remember that cut off in the chapter too being really good and just being like, the fuck are they going to do? I need to know. Um, so they've at least set up like the intrigue for episode two really nicely. Um, very much the same way I believe the manga did. Speaking of which, I did mention Sonic and I forgot to mention this a little bit. Apparently... There's some kind of prophecy in the works, and we have um, the Hero Association trying to introduce the villains into the fold and get the help of both sides before humanity can be, what I assume is wiped out, if I remember right. Um, yeah, it didn't go too well. Sonic basically stole the papers without anyone realizing it, read all the handouts out loud, and then just, you know, pissed, pissed it all away. Now, if I remember right, the big bad was actually there in that meeting. Now, whether or not he shows up in episode two or not, I'm not sure. Because they may just skip over that section to, like, introduce him in a different way. I'd be curious. I'm I'm trying to remember the exact... Because it's been a while since I've read the manga. It was probably right after season one ended. I read through a good portion of the manga that was available up until that point. Um, I'm trying to remember, but I'm not 100% sure. But I, I'm i like 90... You know what, fuck it. 85% sure that he was there. And there was a point in that meeting where um, he got his own little dialogue intro about it. Um, either that, or he skipped it himself and was monologuing in his head about it later. Who knows? Um, I'd have to look back and check that. Either way, I, I am stoked for this villain because I will, not to give out any spoilers, but I will say he is very much, he will give Saitama a run for his money. That I will say. So yeah, not a whole heck of a lot to say about this episode otherwise. Just more more excitement for what's to come and less of what was here in this one specifically. There are a couple of good gags. King just freaking out in the uh, in the bathroom. After telling the guy, like, hey, I, I need to take a piss. You want to fight me at 100%, right? I, I got to take a piss because we've been fighting at, like, 50% all day. So, like, you have a decent gag there. And then his whole, like, internal monologue freak out in the stall. Which I can't say wasn't composed badly. But I feel like there should have been more movement to it. Because a lot of it's just monologuing and, like, close-ups with very minor twitch movements. Like, I feel there should have been a bit more, like, action in there. Maybe, like, a point where, like, he's grabbing his head and just, like, furiously trying to figure out what's wrong. I'm doing the motions here. Furiously trying to scribble, like, rub his head, scratch his, through his hair. Just the frustration of what do I do now? Do I just run away? But there's people that are going to die out there. More, more, like struggle oh hey look there's a phone hold on a minute people we're going to pause you know you go to record one time you know in a day and the phone decides to ring or there's a guy outside mowing the lawn maybe i should just start unplugging these things when i'm recording it might be a smarter idea all right either way back to one punch man anyway king yeah th there should have been more inner internal struggle with king like yes he's a coward but he's not like I feel like he's kind of portrayed here where it's like he didn't even feel sorry for the fact that he was leaving them behind. And I feel like he did in the manga where he felt bad about what he had, what he did, even though he had like to in his mind do it because he, he can't fight. He's going to die like his own self-preservation is telling him to leave and run. Whereas like everything else, you know, everything else is just like he, he's not a bad person yet. In this episode, he's kind of made out to be a piece of shit because he doesn't even care. Like, he barely mentions it, if anything. It's kind of just a toss-away comment. 
Whereas I, I'm pretty sure in the manga he agonizes for a little bit in his monologue about about what's going to happen to them. And I don't recall that specifically happening in the first episode, which kind of puts King in a bad light, unfortunately. And I like King as a character. He's very interesting. He, he's got his, like, weird, stupid, quirky sides, like most of the characters here. Same that we'll get with Fubiki when we get her episode in episode two. You know, I said there wasn't a lot to talk about, and here I am. It's still going on. Anyway, either way, I, I want King to be a good character. I know he's a good character, and it just seems like there were bits left out that helped flesh him out more. Um, and, like, the fight being chopped up the way it was, I don't know if that was... I don't remember if that's how it was in the manga, or if it was done this way to, like, try and save budget. Um... The art itself wasn't bad. I can't say it looked bad. It's the animations that I'm a bit eh on. I'm still worried until we see like a big action sequence that can prove to me that like everything's still just as good as season one. I'm hyped for what comes next because Fubagi is probably one of my favorite characters in this series. Like out of all the female cast, she's probably one of my favorites. Just because she's got such an interesting dynamic. I'm hyped for the villain when he pops up. I'm extremely interested in just where the rest of this is going to go. So, when we get that big bad, which we might get a tease of in the next episode, if I'm remembering correctly, we might... It's not going to be his episode. It's definitely going to be Fubuki's. But we might get a tease. Right, okay, so... When the phone interrupted me, I completely forgot about this bit. So, there was a small bit in here that I wanted to mention, and that's the intro. I don't want to knock the songwriter or the band that did it, which is escaping me at the moment. Um, but I'm going to be honest. It is a very poor follow-up to the hero from season one. That intro was just amazing. Like, the song was great. The animation that went along with it was beautiful. I loved it. I listened to that song on, like, fairly regularly and other, like, covers of it that I like. Whereas this one, and this, this could all just be personal opinion, clearly, I don't care for it as much. I don't think it holds up to the hero in any way, shape, or form. I think whereas the hero would be like, let's put it on a rating scale of like 9 out of 10, right? Potentially higher, depending on who's looking at it. Um, this is somewhere at about a 4. Like, I'm not going to go out of my way to find this song and listen to this song. I didn't like the intro sequence where... It's the the opening is basically just here's like maybe a scene from the series maybe in the future this is what you're gonna see and after that we get like some like intros of characters with their names flying along the side you know almost almost Borderlands esque intros actually um now that I'm thinking about it with like the pose and the name flying in. Like, I don't think that's as good. I really don't. I think that's a poor choice. It works when it's given context. Like, in Borderlands, it works because it's kind of the gag. And it's in the middle of the game. It's not in just, like... It's part of the gag. In, in One Punch Man, it's not part of the gag. And it shouldn't be part of the intro, which is supposed to get you hyped. I don't feel like this was a good choice as far as an intro goes. And it feels even weirder when you start throwing in, like, the comic book manga panel kind of setup it has. Oh, phone's going off. Lovely. Either way, um, I don't think it works as well. I think season one's intro was by far and away better. And if nothing else, fucking reuse that shit. Like, those harsh shadows in that intro were badass. Those action sequences of Saitama punching out his enemies, amazing. And then we go into this intro and it's just kind of like, 
Yay, shooting star sparkles over there, and Powie, Powder Pup Princess is over there, and oh, hey, look, there's, there's Saitama. He's all happy-go-lucky. I, I don't know. I don't like it. It doesn't feel as strong. It, there's, there is so much more that that intro could have been. Because it, it just, it doesn't. It does not hype you up the way Season 1's intro did. And the content of Episode 1 is not the best to go off of, as far as, like, hyping you up for what's to come. Yes, there's that tantalizing, tantalizing edge with Sonic and uh, Fubuki at the very tail end of that episode, but that's about it. And honestly, I don't even know why they had the flying of the names there. Like, with Fubuki and her grunts. Because I don't think that was in the manga, but I honestly don't think it should have been there. It should have been left as a mystery as to who she was and what she was after with Saitama. I mean, the latter part of that was, we don't know why she wants Saitama. Um, but we know what her name is, and I honestly think that should have been left for us to guess. I don't think they should have told us. I don't like... If this whole slapping the name on when a new character shows up continues, I'm gonna be, like, I'm not gonna like it. It's gonna be irritating. Like, with, like I said, with, when it comes to, like, um, Borderlands, it's a gag, right? And they've made fun of the gag to the point where, like, your character, like, the characters in Borderlands are literally doing a slow motion thing for this gag intro with their name flying in out of nowhere, right? They've made fun of the fact that it's a gag. This is like, no, it's serious. And I don't really care for it. I don't care for the comic booky feel of the intro. It it doesn't work in, to me. It doesn't hype you up for the series like it needs to. The first episode, or the first season did that by far and away better. Like, this is not a... Oh God, I, I just... I want season two to be good. I do. Because I love where the manga went. Even up to the point where I read. And I, I know that whatever is in season two, what I read, I think was maybe like halfway through what season two is going to be. Maybe three quarters. Because there's a point where we're going to see that bat guy. It's in the intro fighting. Um... And I believe it was right around the end of that fight that we saw him in that I ended. Uh, that, that it stopped. Um, I want to know where it goes. I hope it's good. But there are some tells here in this first episode. And maybe it's just because it's the first episode they're doing with this studio. I'm just hoping they can pull this off. Because... If we can get a season three of One Punch Man with this studio just taking season two temporarily until, I believe, Madhouse did the first one. I hate it. I don't remember. Ugh. Either way. If we can get the original studio back for a season three, that would be the most ideal. Because that director is the one that really put things into perspective for everyone in the way that it was shot and done. They hyped up everything. They made it look amazing. And One Punch Man Season 1 is still one of my favorite animes. <laughs> if not my favorite... Definitely my favorite anime of that year, I think. And potentially one of the best ones I have watched. Period. It would it would easily make a top 10 list. Just with that one season. So yeah, those I guess are my thoughts on One Punch Man Season 1. Or... Wow, brain, fuck, work. One Punch Man se Season 2, Episode 1. Um, I will try to get back to you guys with the next episode, hopefully more on time. Um, and eventually when Other Brain joins me, we will have a bit more to debate about back and forth. Anyway, I will catch you guys next time. See ya!